Some brass players are under the wrong impression when it comes to breathing. Um, in fact, I was under the wrong impression for the longest time because when I was a youngster, I was laid on the floor and somebody put a book on my belly and they suggested that I imagine that book was going to touch the roof. Now, I'm not sure why they were doing this, but what I took away from that was I was supposed to really puff out or pooch out my belly in order to breathe. And this is absolutely wrong. Now, let me be clear, there is expansion down in the belly or the abdominal area, but that's not what causes air to come into the body. And that's the misunderstanding that I was under. I call this belly dancing breathing because there's a um, uh, too much emphasis on trying to push out where your belly button is. And uh, again, that's really the wrong incentive. Here's what belly dancing breathing looks like. You can see I'm really working to get my belly out, uh, but there's really not very much air coming through my instrument, which should tell you something, because that's kind of the whole point, isn't it? In fact, air does not go down here. Air goes up here, where your lungs are. Your lungs are surrounded by your ribs. So in order to get air into your body, you really have to understand where the air goes. It goes up here. It does not go down here. So a much more healthy incentive than to move your belly is to move your ribs. Because the way this works is that when your ribs swing up and out, then your thoracic cavity inside, that's where your lungs are, it gets larger. And when that happens, there is less air pressure inside than there is in the atmosphere outside. Makes sense. The air rushes in to equalize the pressure. And that's sort of the basic principle of breathing. However, if you're not moving your ribs and you're just moving down here in your abdomen, then you aren't changing the size of your thoracic cavity so that the air can't come in. So here's what good breathing looks and sounds like. So when I breathe well, I move all over. And when I breathe poorly, I just move down here. Now, I'm going to do this again so you can see it several times, and I want you to take special note of the, the whoosh of air that's rushing through the instrument. There is a large volume of air. Well, that's because I'm taking in a lot of air, and I'm making it go through the horn, uh, one, one breath after another. Once again, yes, of course, there's abdominal expansion, but that happens as a result of the diaphragm descending and pushing down on all of your guts and your abdomen. So that's where abdominal expansion comes from. Please don't put the cart before the horse. Please don't use abdominal expansion as your incentive to bring air into the body because that's not how it works. So here it is again. First, uh, belly dancing breathing, that's wrong. And then you'll see me very clearly switch to doing it right. That should be very obvious, both in how it looks and how it sounds. I believe one of the reasons people become belly dancing breathers is because if you do the absolute opposite of belly dancing, and that is lift your shoulders in, in a, an artificial sort of way, well, we all know we're not supposed to do that either. This is what that looks like. And I'm not condoning that at all. So sometimes when a director sees that, they'll say, oh, well, don't move your shoulders. Or they might say something like, um, breathe low, in order to counter the unnatural lifting of the shoulders that they're seeing. Unfortunately, uh, particularly with younger students, they realize, oh, well, I'm not supposed to do this. So they exaggerate the opposite, which is what, in part, might create belly dancing breathing. Now, one more very important issue here. When I do it right, you're seeing my shoulders move a little bit, but I wanna be clear, I am not moving my shoulders. 
I am moving my ribs so much that they are literally pushing my arms up and out of the way. So if this represents my ribs, as I inhale, my ribs swing up and out, creating space in that thoracic cavity like we talked about. And then when I exhale, they come back down and into resting. So if I'm breathing really vigorously like I'm doing now, those ribs swing way up, so much so that they literally push the arm structure up and sort of out of the way. So it's really the ribs that are primary here. I'll do this again so you can really see it. Uh, if I were to lift my shoulders on purpose in an artificial sort of way, um, this is what that would look like. <laughs> and that would be pretty silly, wouldn't it? So here it is once again when I do it right, and you'll see a little bit of motion here by virtue of the fact that the ribs are moving so much. Air to spare.